Thank you very much. It's nice to be out here in God's country. And I have sailed here on the bay for many years. And for sure, this is quite the natural uh, arena for yacht racing. And uh, the America's Cup to be out here to look at these waters is almost beyond belief. Will people, visitors come to San Francisco from around the world? And my answer is, you bet they will. You got a wonderful city. You got great hotels, great restaurants, the amphitheater, a lot in the surrounding area, California. You have a super opportunity. First of all, you always want to have a team to cheer for or cheer against. Now, I'm guessing in this part of the world, maybe the 49ers are somebody you cheer for, and uh, the Dallas Cowboys are somebody you don't. But anyway, you want to have a cheering interest in the team. Patriotism counts. So that flying that flag on that USA boat will attract a lot of attention. And we all want close races or close games. The Super Bowl, you want the final result decided in the last two minutes. So these sailboat races, if they're close and we see lead changes, they're going to be interesting. And we want to have some compelling personalities. I've been watching some of the old Tom Blackholer uh, moments on uh, the internet of late. What, boy, don't we miss him? Yeah. I mean, there was a guy that called a spade a spade. On the stage while we were announcing America's Cup, and he said, in the America's Cup ought to be in the fastest boats, in the most high-tech boats that they are. They ought to be 85-foot maxis. And I said, Alan, the fastest boats are catamarans. What about catamarans? Catamarans? No, no. I remember being in a protest with him one time. He and I were on the same thing, and he wrote up the protest form against Dennis Conner, bespelled Dennis Denise, got Dennis all upset. <laughs> But guys like Black Holer and Ted Turner and Buddy Melgas and, and Dennis Conner, in a lot of ways, were larger than life. And you can't predict now what characters are going to come along. But I will tell you, the winners of the athletes are going to be the ones that are fun, colorful, engaging, and not scripted. And what else do we like? Well, we're going to like the speed. The America's Cup has always been about speed. These boats are going to go pretty fast. The 72-foot long, 46-foot catamaran with a 130-foot wing sail, they have potential to go fast. And those boats over in Valencia going three times the speed of the wind, you know, they're going 18 knots and six knots of breeze. I wish I could borrow that in my etchels occasionally, just a little bit, to make it go faster. And I have a gut feeling we might see a few crashes along the way, which is horrible, terrible, but great for Sports Center. <laughs> what is going to happen next? Well, finally, we know that it's going to be here on the bay and it's going to take place in 2013. But I will say that you should expect the unexpected. No matter how much plans are out there, some wild and crazy things are for sure going to happen. Why? Well, as you all know, the bay is a pretty interesting place to sail. The breeze can come up. The currents can be capricious. You got a few uh, landmarks along the way. And the competitors are driven hard to win this race. And right now, on paper, you say, well, the Oracle Racing Team is certainly going to win. They've got all the technology. They've got the experience. They're the defender. But you don't know what sailing technique, what little design edge will come along that might rewrite history. Who ever thought the Australians would come up with a boat with wings and defeat Dennis Conner in Newport, Rhode Island? Celebrate and cherish the history of the America's Cup. The 12 meters of the past are archaic compared to these catamarans that we're about to see. And the J-boats are intriguing, but they too are uh, designs. But this America's Cup is built on a long history, 1851 to 2011 right now, 160 years. But each of these boats was the fastest, most sophisticated design at the time they were racing. And the sailors pushed the boats to unbelievable li limits. Charlie Barr, 1903 five foot four, and he was on board the boat, but he was tough as nails, and Nathaniel Green Harrisoff built a skimming dish, basically, with a 218-foot mast and uh, named Reliance, and the only reason he built this wild, crazy boat is he knew there was only one guy in the world that could handle it, Charlie Barr. And Nathaniel Harrisoff actually sailed on all six of the America's Cup boats that he designed and built and was on the crew. I mean, really intriguing, engaging stories. So I would celebrate the past and think about how cool it is to have here. And the Australians 
to their credit, took the attitude, we're glad to have the cup here. It's a big moment in our history. But now, let's use this opportunity to promote Australia. And Australia benefited for years and years after that people say, hey, I want to go there. What a cool place to do. 10 million sounds like an awful lot of people to me. <laughs> but I think that as soon as boats are sailing here, you're going to have people coming. And all those people that have a good experience are going to go home and say, hey, you ought to go see this. And I'm going back. So I think it'll uh, grow and grow and grow when you've got the internet to, to get the word out there. I mean, it'd be hard to predict how many people will come. But I think people start showing up as soon as there's activity and racing going on here. And they won't all come at once. They'll uh, come and go. But for sure, you know, Fremantle, there was a lot of visitors. And Auckland had a lot of visitors. And Valencia uh, had plenty of visitors and filled up passenger ships. And I think you're going to find a lot of visitors here. And you'll probably break the record, I'm sure, of having because you've got such a good easy to get to accommodating place, easy from Asia and, and uh, from the rest of the United States. Now, I've lived and breathed this regatta for a long time. 1962, 12 years old, Newport, Rhode Island. My family went up to Rhode Island to take a look at the America's Cup. And I got to tell you, as a 12-year-old, to see those 12 meters being out towed to the starting line was quite awe-inspiring. And then for me, a miracle happened. 15 short years later, there I was in a uniform on one of those boats out there sailing. And I've been on a winning boat, which I can report is great. I've also been on some losing boats I can report is not as great. And as John pointed out, I have covered this event for a long time for ESPN. And I've been part of venues and various teams. And so I look at the America's Cup with very wide eyes. And there's a lot that can be done with the trophy. But here's my first message. To actually get something out of this, you need to be prepared to put something in. There is no free lunch here, and you have to be clever, engaged, and put something into it. And if you do, the rewards will come back to you. Because of all the sporting events in sailing, this is the only one that reaches beyond the normal sailing audience. As much as Latitude 38 and Sailing World wants to hope that we're reaching the whole world, the fact is, these publications are reaching passionate sailors. And America's Cup has that ability to reach out beyond that. These races are going to be exploited in ways that maybe none of us understand. I mean, you've got the Silicon Valley just down the street here. And what could happen communicating this event uh, could be quite special. For the city of San Francisco, the whole city needs to be accommodating and welcoming. And the fact that you got the city council to have an 11 vote vote and everybody on both sides of the aisle. See, you do have politicians on both sides of the aisle here, don't you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I live near Washington, DC. And they might be in the room, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but everybody's behind it. So being welcoming, easy access to the waterfront. You want to be able to see these races. And whether you're on Angel Island or Alcatraz or along the city front or over in Sausalito, it looks to me, and John Craig's coming here in a little while, he's going to explain the course, but it looks to me there's going to be a lot of places to be able to see these races. And for that reason, you're going to find a lot of people come here. So the question is, how do you get America to come to San Francisco to see these races? I would recommend is sending ambassadors out around the country and around the world to talk about how cool it is in San Francisco. I mean, just think if you got a speakers group together of half a dozen people and asked everybody to speak six times, 36 presentations around the United States inviting people to come. You can do this at boat shows or various uh, club meetings and uh, tell the world that you're open for business, come here, and what are you really selling? What you're selling is having a good time. That's why you want to come to the America's Cup and be part of history. So what about the venues? Well, we've seen some small towns and some big cities for the Cup. And the small towns like Fremantle and Newport, the America's Cup dominates. San Diego, seventh largest city in America, got lost a little bit. Valencia, a medium-sized uh, European city, it, it almost dominated, but half the population didn't know what was going on there. 
Auckland, you knew the America's Cup was going on. The city of sales, everybody's there. So in, in San Francisco, what's it going to be? Is it going to be just a little sidebar event? Or when you get to the airport, is there going to be some signage? Are people going to talk about it? Are the taxi cabs going to say, oh, you're here for the America's Cup? The only way to do this is for everybody in this room to keep talking it up in a really positive tone, and that will be infectious. For advertisers, for sponsors, the question they're going to ask is, will my association with the America's Cup improve the visibility and reputation of my product? And most importantly, will I sell a little bit more as a direct result? And let me leave you with one message, even though I gave you a lot of nuts and bolts here today. Remember this, and if you use this one thing, everything else becomes simple. The sport of sailing is all about having fun. That's what it's all about. I hope you have fun with this. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.